What's up sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel and it's time to give you my updated college football top 25 rankings heading into week three of the 2023 college football season. A couple weeks of college football is officially complete. Uh, we are now heading into the third weekend of the college football season. Uh, week number two is a very competitive game, um, competitive week I should say. Um, not just very competitive um, game and everything, but we had a lot of competitive games over the weekend. I believe week number two is probably the most exciting weekend so far the college football season. And again, we just had some big time games. You know, there was a lot of upsets as well. A lot of things to take away from yesterday as well and a couple days ago. So uh, we're now going to give you my top 25 rankings for week number three. And again, I haven't really learned a whole bunch about these teams just yet, but and that second weekend, I think we learned a few things, and I think um, these teams are going to get better down the stretch. I mean, we're going to see these teams get better until about, you know, maybe it's this weekend, or maybe it's the fourth or fifth weekend. But I think we learned a little bit about, you know, these teams just a little bit over the weekend and see how they're how competitive they are against, you know, the top 25 and against, you know, other Power 5 conferences. So let's get right into it with my top 25 updated rankings heading into week three of the college football season. And we'll start from the bottom and work our way to the top like we always do. And I made a few changes here to my top 25. It's going to be a little bit different compared to last week due to, you know, week number two being an exciting weekend. And we'll start from 21 through 25. At number 25, I have Miami here at number 25. I was very impressed with their performance against Texas A&M over the weekend. I mean, this team is definitely an ACC contender now. I think they're right up there with, you know, North Carolina, Florida State. Uh, Duke. I really wouldn't count out Clemson in that conversation, but uh, Clemson's just definitely been a team that, you know, is a very surprise team this year. You know, Duke beat them in that week one matchup, and I just don't really see Clemson winning out for the rest of the year. But Miami, I was definitely impressed with their performance against the Aggies. Uh, their offense, I was very impressed with. Defense still needs a little bit of work, but I think defensively they'll get better down the stretch, but it seems like their offense is finding ways to score. And then Tyler Van Dyke, I think, played his best game of his career so far. And he was definitely better in that in this game against Texas A&M than he was last year. And it seems like we got the Tyler Van Dyke back from, you know, you know, 2021 when he had that really good season for Miami. So Miami, again, number 25 for me. I didn't have him on my top 25 last week. But based off of their performance against Texas A&M, Texas A&M wasn't also ranked in my top 25. But basically, based off of how they performed against Texas A&M, I was just very impressed with this Miami team, and it seems like they're back to where they need to be. And again, Miami is a serious contender now in the ACC, so they're here at number 25 for me. Again, I was just very impressed with this offense. Colorado at number 24 got off to a pretty slow start in that first half against Nebraska. It was a defensive battle pretty much in the first few minutes of the game and also in the second quarter. Then Colorado got going on offense. Uh, Shaheen Sanders um, continues to really improve. Uh, Shadir Sanders, I guess that's how you pronounce his name for Colorado. Uh, he continues to put up big numbers. He's off to a really good start in the first two games of the season. And who saw this coming? Colorado being 2-0 in the first two weeks. You know, a lot of people picked them to start out 0-2 with losses to Nebraska and also TCU. And that TCU game, you know, really proved to us that Colorado is for real a good team this year. Uh, Colorado, I had to see them still play a Pac-12 team in order to, for me to call them a Pac-12 contender. Uh, the Pac-12 had another great weekend of college football. Uh, Colorado just really cont um, shows us that they are going to be a surprise team this year. Travis Hunter knows how to get it done on both sides of the football, especially at wide receiver. Um, you know, I like what that what kind of move he did on those two Nebraska players. And Nebraska for them, you know, they just turned the ball over too many times in this game. And I think that's how Colorado won the game pretty easily. So Colorado here at number 24. Duke at number 23 took care of business this weekend. Uh, fresh off that win against Clemson a couple weeks ago. I think Duke is up there with the top contenders in the ACC. Again, there are no divisions in the ACC this year, and that's kind of what makes the difference about the ACC. But the ACC, I think, is definitely you know the second-best conference right now. I think the first conference is probably the Pac-12 because the Pac-12 has looked good in the first couple weeks. And then the SEC probably is third, and then the Big Ten, or maybe the Big 12, but the Big Ten is off to a really slow start. But Duke here at number 23, not much talk to talk about them over the weekend. Uh, they just took care of business. That's all I can say about them. 
Iowa here at number 22, I was very impressed with their defense against Iowa State. And I knew going into that game it will be a low-scoring type battle. I mean, it usually is between the Cyclones and the Hawkeyes. I think Iowa is the front runner right now in the Big Ten West. I think, you know, you can't really count out these Big Ten West teams just yet, but I think you pretty much can count out Nebraska now because they're 0-2. Northwestern, they're 1-1. They lost to their first game in the Big Ten against the Rutgers, and I just don't really want to count them out yet. But again, you know, Iowa and Minnesota are, seem like they're the two front runners in the Big Ten West for right now. Uh, Purdue lost a week one game to Fresno State, so that's how... I think Iowa is the front runner in the Big Ten right now. But Minnesota is right there with them. Again, you know, Iowa's been probably, you know, the more better team in the first two weeks. But, again, Iowa's offense still needs some work to do. But their defense is really on fire right now. Again, their defense was really good this, you know, a couple weeks ago against Utah State. And then they were really good against Iowa State. And they holded them to just 13 points in this game. And I knew going into that game it will be a low-scoring type game between those two teams. So Iowa here at number 22. Washington State at number 21. This is a different um, team here at number 21. I had Wisconsin here last week, but due to them getting beat by this Washington State team, I put Washington State here at number 21. I was very impressed with this Washington State team, and they definitely were the more better team against Wisconsin, the more better offense, and the more experienced of a roster. And plus, they had home field advantage going into that game. And plus, they were an underdog going into that game as well. They were like a six-point underdog in that game, and they ended up winning by more than that. And the same thing with Miami. They were like a four-point underdog against Texas A&M. I mean, both of those teams were very similar. They won, like, more than, you know, four or six points in both of their games. Uh, Washington State, though, I was just very impressed with them. This team is 2-0. and And I said all offseason, I think this team is a dark horse contender in the Pac-12. So don't sleep on this Washington State team. But those are my rankings from 21 through 25. Let's now go from 16 through 20. I haven't made a lot of changes here from 16 through 20. I got North Carolina the same way they were from last week. Oklahoma at number 19. I still have them at number 19, the same thing I had them at last week. Ole Miss at number 18, though. Uh, they jumped from, you know, number 22 to number 18 for me due to that top 25 win against Tulane. I was very impressed with Ole Miss's defense. I was very impressed with Jackson Dart at quarterback. And, you know, a lot of people doubted Jackson Dart in the offseason. A lot of people think Barry Sanders was going to really start this season, the Oklahoma State transfer. But, again, Jackson Dart continues to be a really good quarterback. I think he's much more better than he was last year. Again, I had to see him play like a really good team, but he kind of showed us that in the Tulane game. And now Tulane was without their starting quarterback in this game. I think that's the reason why Ole Miss came out on top in this game and the defense just played pretty well uh, for the Rebels. But, Ole Miss definitely deserves to be here at number 18. North Carolina surviving a double overtime game against Appalachian State. And remember I said in my upset alert video this past week, that game was going to be closer than a double-digit game for North Carolina because North Carolina was favored by 18 in that game, and they ended up just winning in double overtime. Appalachian State is not a bad Sun Belt team, but the Tar Heels do survive. They improved to 2-0, and I think they're also still there at the top of the ACC. Oklahoma at number 19, not a lot of points for them in their second weekend against SMU. SMU is a pretty good group of five team. We saw Oklahoma and North Carolina kind of struggle against the group of five teams over the weekend. So that's why I still have them here at number 19 and number 20. But Oklahoma, I think they'll be, you know, really good on offense for the rest of the year. I mean, that offense was very explosive in the first weekend. But only scoring 28 points in this game against SMU. And again, SMU is a really good group of five team. So I think that's the reason why Oklahoma will stay here at number 19. But Kansas State and, um, and Oregon State here at number 16. I haven't really made a change here from 16 and 17. Uh, Kansas State, I have to see them play like a really good team for me to, in order for me to put them up there, uh, maybe in the top 10 or maybe like also in the top 15. Uh, they'll get that this weekend. I mean, we're going to see how good this Kansas State team is when their first true road game happens this weekend. Uh, they'll play Missouri on the road this weekend. I'm thinking that's going to be an upset alert type game there. Uh, Kansas State, though, is a really good team. I think they're right there with the Big 12 teams. I think Oklahoma and Kansas State are pretty even. And then Texas, you could probably say that they're the front runners right now in the Big 12. But don't sleep on Kansas State. And then Oregon State at number 16. I've been very impressed with their offense so far in the first two games. I mean, this team can run the football. They can pass the football. 
Their defense just looks overall that good as well. So these are my rankings from 16, 16 through 20. And again, no real change here from 16 through 20. All right, 11 through 15, I made a few changes here from 11 through 15. Oregon still remains here at number 15. Clemson at number 14 still remains here. Um, Oregon and um, Clemson were here at number 15 and number 14 from last week. Tennessee at number 13, I dropped them a couple spots. Uh, they were at number 11 for me this past week, but based off of their performance against Austin P, uh, I, I just wasn't very impressed with Tennessee over the weekend. I mean, maybe this team was just not focused on Austin P. They were probably focused on that Florida game, which is coming up this weekend, and that will be their first true road test of the season as well. Tennessee is going to have to put their um, game face on coming up this weekend. Because I don't think Florida is going to be an easy game for them. A lot of people are doubting that Florida team to beat Tennessee. But when I look back on my preseason predictions, I did pick Florida to win that game. And you know, based off of Tennessee's performance, you know, it could be a lot. It could be a lot closer game. You know, a lot of people are saying this is going to be a blowout this weekend. But I don't really see Tennessee going out, going in there and blowing out Florida. I mean, based off of the performance against Austin P. It's going to be hard to tell if this Tennessee team was focused on Florida or if they were just not ready to play against Austin P. So Tennessee, I dropped them a couple spots after that performance against Austin P. I'm um, going back to Oregon. They survived a close one uh, to um, Texas Tech. A pick six, you know, later in the fourth quarter kind of changed the game. Texas Tech threw an interception, and that was taken back for a pick six. Oregon took the lead by a field goal by one point, and then, of course, they picked that off, and they ended up winning that game by eight. So that was a very close game there for Oregon, but they still came out on top with the win. Clemson at number 14. They were in a tight battle in that first quarter against an FCS team, but they still pulled away, and then they scored 66 points. So Clemson redeeming themselves. Their offense um, got better down the stretch there. And like I said, I dropped Tennessee a couple spots due to that Austin P game. Utah at number 12, um, I dropped them a couple spots as well. Uh, last week I had them at number 10. I don't think this Utah team is a top 10 team without Cam Rising. I'm just saying that right now. Utah doesn't look like a really good team. They had to change a few things at quarterback. I mean, they had to go with two quarterbacks in this game. The passing game is just not really good for Utah. But Utah also had to come back from behind in that game against Baylor. Uh, Baylor was in control that game from the start, and then Utah just, you know, their defense kind of held up in that game, and that was just enough for them to win this game. So, again, it was a very close game between Utah and Baylor. I mean, both Oregon and Utah were kind of similar, but the, both of these teams had to come back from behind. I mean, it was a very, very tough places to play for both of these teams with Utah and Oregon. Oregon had to play a Big 12 team in Texas Tech, and then Utah had to go on the road and play a Big 12 team in Baylor. So, Again, I, I dropped Utah about a couple spots here just based off of their performance. And again, I don't think this team is a top you know 10 team without Cam Rising at quarterback. Hopefully they can get him back soon, and that offense can be very explosive for this Utah team. Alabama at number 11. They were at number 5 for me this past week. They dropped down to number 11 based off of that performance against Texas. I mean, Alabama just couldn't really get that offense going. I mean, they got it going in the second half, but... Again, the defensive line for Texas continued to pressure quarterback Jalen Moreau. I mean, Moreau just got pressured in this game. The offensive line could not protect him. Uh, Texas really stopped the um, running attack of Alabama as well. Yeah, Alabama has issues right now, but it's just a couple weeks in. Maybe Alabama will get better. I don't think their playoff hopes are over yet, but it's kind of tough to see Alabama losing a game in week number two like they almost did last year to Texas. But Texas' offense just proved to be the better team, or the better offense, and they just proved to be the better team in this game. Again, Alabama's really young this year, but they, this team still has talent. Um, hopefully they can redeem themselves uh, this weekend and probably redeem themselves the rest of the way. Like I said, these teams are going to get better down the stretch. So Alabama here at number 11. Um, they're sitting there at 1-1. One and one. But Those are my rankings from 11 through 15. And again, I made a few changes here from 11 through 15. Let's go down from 6 through 10. Notre Dame here at number 10. Uh, this offense really explosive in the first three games of the season. Uh, Notre Dame could be one of the best offenses in the country by right now, but I don't think they're right up there with the top offenses in the country just yet. But 
This Notre Dame team continues to get better. Uh, we've seen the um, offense really score a lot of points in the first three games of the season. Uh, Notre Dame kind of, you know, proved that their offense is good enough. I mean, we kind of, you know, saw that in the game against NC State. NC State was kind of right there with Notre Dame in the first half of the game, and then Notre Dame kind of pulled away. Their defense started to play a lot better as well. Uh, Notre Dame, they're 3-0. I think they definitely deserve to be here in the top 10 just based off of Tennessee and Utah's performance. And then, of course, Alabama moving down to number 11. So I think Notre Dame definitely deserves to be here in the top 10. I'm not saying they're going to be like a playoff contender just yet or maybe like a, you know, to win the national title and everything. Because Notre Dame still has a tough stretch. I mean, they still have to play Ohio State, Clemson on the schedule. They still have to play all these other teams in the ACC. So Notre Dame still has a tough path for them. But, again, this team definitely deserves to be here in the top ten. And, again, that, you know, game against NC State, there was a lot of, you know, there was a weather delay for an hour. And then once they came back out on the field, they just made a statement. So Notre Dame here at number ten. Washington took care of business this weekend. Not much to talk about them. They'll play Michigan State on the road this weekend. That will be a very tough game there for them. But, again, I think Washington should be the overall better team going into that game this weekend against the Spartans. USC at number eight, their offense is really dangerous in the first three games of the season. They're kind of similar to Notre Dame, but I think USC is just a little bit more explosive than Notre Dame. USC has scored 56 points, you know, against Stanford in their game um, from a couple days ago. That game was just over from the start. This USC offense is just very explosive. They have plenty of depth on their roster. Defense looks like it's getting a lot better. I mean, they only allowed 10 points in this game. So, again, you could tell by that defense is getting better. But I'm not going to move them up here into the top, you know, five just based off of that performance against Stanford because Stanford is not really a good team. So, uh, USC and Washington, these are the two teams in the top 10, top 10 here in the Pac-12. Again, we have a lot of teams in the Pac-12 that are ranked here in the top 25. You have USC, Washington, Utah, Oregon, Colorado, and Washington State. So you have a lot of teams here in the Pac-12 that are really, you know, are going to be good this year. I mean, the Pac-12 is probably the top conference as of right now um, in college football. I think a lot of people would agree with that right now. I know Cal lost to Auburn on the road, or you know, at home this weekend. Arizona State also lost, and then Arizona lost as well. But the Pac-12 is still, you know, I think the top conference in the country. Penn State at number seven. Uh, they took care of business this weekend. Not much to talk about Penn State, but I think this is a team that can really challenge for the Big Ten East this year just based off of what their offense has done in the first you know, two games of the season. I think Penn State is going to get better as well, and they're here at number seven for me, and then LSU here at number six. LSU coming off that loss to Florida State a couple weeks ago, but then they redeemed themselves. The offense looked much better in their game against Grambling University. I knew they were going to take care of business in that game. So no real change here with LSU and Penn State. But again, Notre Dame joins you know the top 10 here for me in, t- in the top 25 for week number three. So those are my rankings from 6 through 10. And here is the top five now. Ohio State at number five. Texas at number four, Florida State at number three, Michigan at number two, and then Georgia at number one. I still think Georgia is the top team in the country. I don't think they're a dangerous team just yet because they haven't really proved it against a tougher opponent. Uh, They'll play their first conference game this weekend against South Carolina, which I don't think that's going to be a big game now. I think Georgia should go in there and probably prove a statement that they are still the top team in the country because there's a lot of other teams out there that are getting more hype than Georgia this season. Michigan at number two. I know Michigan's offense has not looked good in the first couple games. I mean, maybe it's just because of Jim Harbaugh's suspension. Maybe they'll find their offense in the fourth week of the college football season, and I think Michigan will get better down the stretch. Florida State took care of business in their game. They blew out their opponent over the weekend. Uh, This is probably the best team in the ACC as of right now. Uh, you got North Carolina and Miami, just like I mentioned, in the ACC that could really challenge Florida State. I still don't think Clemson is out of it. But again, Florida State is definitely the top team in the ACC as of right now. You got Duke in that conversation and also Louisville in that conversation. The ACC, you know, path is going to be a really, really close path for all these teams in the ACC. Texas at number four, they really proved us wrong over the weekend. Quinn Ewers looks like a top 10 quarterback and obviously looks like a Heisman candidate already. Um, I don't think Texas is going to win the national championship just yet, just based off they beat Alabama. I know that, but I don't think they're really, 
you know, as of right now, going to win the national championship because this team still has a long way to go. Uh, Texas, you know, definitely though proved us wrong over the weekend, and I definitely, um, I, I definitely thought Alabama was maybe the better team going into that game. But Texas just proved to us that they they were the better team, they were the better offense. And what did I say about my top twenty five video last week? Texas was focused on Alabama, you know, all week, all week, and then of course they were not focused going into that game against Rice, and they kind of, you know, proved to us that they were focused against Alabama going into this weekend. So I think that's how they won the game. Again, defensive line was really strong for Texas. They did not give up a lot of big plays in this game. I mean, Alabama was right with them, you know, in the first half, but second half it was just really all Texas' offense in that game, and Quinn Ewers just definitely performed so much better against Alabama. And you remember, he was out, you know, in that game from last year, but this year he comes in here and makes a statement after that loss from last season. So Texas here at number four, and then Ohio State here at number five. I think Ohio State's offense still has some question marks. Um, I think they were kind of a little bit better against Youngstown State, but again, this offense still has a work to do. I mean, defensively, they're really strong on that side of the football. I thought Kyle McCord played really strong in this game, but they brought in, you know, the backup quarterback as well. So the Ohio State Buckeyes went with, you know, like two different quarterbacks in this game as well. And like I said, both Michigan and Ohio State are pretty similar. Both of these teams still have long ways to go before they can find their offenses. And again, the Big Ten has not been really a, a good conference in the first couple weeks. I mean, the SEC is kind of the third best conference. I think as of right now, the Pac-12 is at the top, and then the ACC is at the second spot. And then at the bottom, it's the Big Ten. I think the Big 12 is just a little bit ahead of them. But again, Ohio State still has some question marks. I mean, we're going to have to see them play like a really good team in order for me to call them you know, a good offense and a great team as well. So, again, Ohio State still has some question marks on the offensive side of the football. But, again, these are my top five teams, Georgia, Michigan, Florida State, Texas, and Ohio State. And those are my updated top 25 rankings for week number three of the 2023 college football season. Uh, again, it was a really exciting week number two of the college football season, probably one of the most exciting uh, you know, weekends so far. In the college football season, um, we're now heading into week three. We don't have a lot of big-time games in week three. I don't think there's any top 25 matchups coming up this weekend, but we'll look at it you know, as we go into the rest of the week. But again, this is my top 25 rankings heading into week three. Let me guys know what you think about these updated top 25 rankings, and stay tuned here for more sports content videos on my Lucas Ross Sports Channel.